This is section 6-7, graphing quadratic inequalities. Having some problem with the sound. Oh, there's this humming sound. I don't know where it's coming from, sorry. Um, when we graph quadratic inequalities, it's very similar to graphing quadratics. The only difference is the shading, and maybe it's a dotted line or a solid line. Anyways, we'll use whatever technique you prefer to graph quadratics, and we'll just do that. So here, I'm gonna do the vertex form. Uh, in order to do the vertex form, I'm going to factor out a 2 of the first two terms because I have a leading coefficient of 2, not because they have a common factor of 2, although that does help. Okay, and then move the plus 1 out there. Take half the middle term and square it and add it. Now, to compensate for that plus 1 squared, I have to subtract out here. However, it's more than just plus one, it's two times positive one. So it's minus two. So we get x minus one squared minus one. All right. So my vertex is at one, negative one. My a is equal to two, so it's going to be opening upward. Right? My a is positive, so it's going to open up. Let's graph this. So one negative one is down here. It's gonna open up one. Oh, should be dotted. Oh. It wants to be greater than, so it's above the parabola. So it's this region. That's it. All right, this is number two. Um, I mentioned the fact that I'm changing these in the vertex form. But I didn't say how I'm doing it, or the, the, the name of the topic. Uh, I'm ch using completing a square in order to change it to a vertex form. So here we go. So it's x squared minus 6x. Um, in order to complete the square, I'm going to take half the middle term and square it and add it. I'm taking half the middle term, which is 3, squaring it and adding it. And to compensate for that, I'm going to have to subtract 9 out here. So this becomes x minus 3 squared plus 3. So my vertex is at 3, 3. OK. Oh, and it's, con it's going to be facing upward because the leading coefficient, or a, is 1. So 3, 3 is about there. And it's going to face up. Oh, and it's dotted. I always forget about that. Just pretend that it looks dotted to you, okay? And this is less than, so you want it below the parabola, so it's down here. That's it, that's number two. Uh, I'm gonna keep going. Hopefully I'm not gonna have problems with the sound on this one. Here's number five. Yeah, I'll leave three and four to you on the worksheet. This one's a little different. I'm not graphing these. I'm just solving the inequality. In order to solve this inequality, I'm going to factor it. It's going to give me x plus 3, x minus 1. And what the factors here is going to do is give me where the boundaries are. If x plus 3, that's going to give me x equals negative 3. Remember, setting each factor equal to 0. So it gives me x equals negative 3 and x equals positive 1. This is a number line, right? So the negative numbers on the left. Um, what I want to do here on a number line is determine for what reasons uh, this combination is going to give me positive or negative answers. Uh, to do that, this is the boundary for x plus 3. Negative 3 is the boundary for x plus 3. It's going to be negative to the left of negative 3 and positive to the right of negative 3. For x minus 1, it's the boundary for x minus 1 is positive 1. It's going to be negative to the left of x 1 and positive to the right. right. Uh, so the combination of the two, negative times negative is going to be positive. Positive times negative, negative. Positive times positive is positive. Now, a student pointed out to me that for our problems, it's always going to look like this. Well, that's true. Uh, it doesn't hurt, though, to get in the habit of making a sign chart of this kind. You will be using it later on. All right, to continue, 
this problem is looking for greater than zero, so we're looking for positive regions. So my positive region is x is less than negative 3, and over here, x greater than 1. To combine two disjoint sets, we use the word or. So my answer to number 5 is x less than three, negative 3, or x greater than 1. Okay, this is number six. Worst paper. Okay, factor it again. X minus six, X plus two. So that's gonna give me the boundaries six and negative two. Remember this is a number line, so the negative numbers on the left. For x plus 2, it's negative on this side, positive on this side. For x minus 6, it's negative here, positive there, giving us that. So, but this time, we're looking for less than 0. So we're looking at for the negative region. Now, to give this answer, this one little region, we write it this way. It's, this is equivalent to x is greater than negative 2 and x is less than 6. Uh, those two are equivalent forms. I just prefer the first. Okay? And that's the answer to number 6.